de hablar. Así que una vez más, si usted no es completamente bilingüe, le pediré que por favor se el idioma preferido, porque de otra manera usted no va a poder escuchar la interpretación cuando alguien está hablando en el otro idioma. Y como siempre, cuando usted selecciona su idioma, puede hacer clic en silenciar el audio original para no estar escuchando ambos idiomas al mismo tiempo. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much, Diego. My name is Dina Marks. I'm the Senior Associate Director of ADL Southwest Region. Just a little bit of background about ADL. We were founded 109 years ago. Our mission is to stop the defamation of the Jewish people and to secure justice and fair treatment to all. So our founders determined that you can't fight one type of hate without fighting all types of hate. And that's the spirit in which we come here tonight. I'd like to introduce you to our regional director, Mark B. Tobin. He will moderate this session. Mark, take it away. Thank you, Dina. Uh, and thank you all for joining us this evening. We're very excited about our program uh, to talk about Israel and people's views uh, on a country uh, for the first visit, uh, learn about their impressions and thoughts. And <clears throat> joining us uh, tonight are three individuals, uh, one of which has been in Israel many times, and two, it's their first initial visit. Um, first is Jacob Monte. He's an immigration and employment partner at Monte and Ramirez LLP. Um, he is also the director of the Latino Jewish Relations Center. Uh, Lupi Talley is co-founder and former executive director of Neighborhood Schools. Uh, she's also the board president of the East Tex Jensen Super Neighborhood Number 46. And lastly, Priscilla True is chief of staff at the Consulate General of Israel to the Southwest. Welcome all. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, Jacob, let's start. Can you first tell us about the center, uh, the Latino Jewish Relations uh, Center. Uh, you're a founder, uh, you're the director. Uh, what does it do and why did you start it? Well, great. Uh, first, I, I wanna say that I'm also very proud to be a new member of the ADL uh, Southwest uh, Board and uh, really excited to, to be part of uh, the organization. So thank you. I should have led with that, sorry about that. <laughs> but yes, uh, so, uh, about 10 years ago, Rabbi Peter Tarlow and I started the Center for Latino Jewish Relations. And Rabbi Tarlow had uh, run a group in, in College Station that was dedicated to uh, crypto, uh, crypto Jewish studies. And I had come uh, back from two trips to Israel that I went uh, with another organization called JINSA. And uh, I decided that I wanted to take Latinos to Israel because you can tell folks about Israel, but when you take them there, it's so much more powerful. So I teamed up with Rabbi Tarlow, and for the last 10 years, we've taken over 100 Latino leaders to Israel. Uh, we're, we, took, we went twice last year, and we're going twice this year. And uh, it's very exciting for me. It's my passion. Uh, our, our goal is to get... Uh, Latinos and, and allies, we, we, we've taken African-Americans, Anglos. It's primarily Latinos right now. That's our focus. But um, the idea is to expose them to Israel. And, uh, and then we pay for them to go. And then the only thing we ask is that they come back and tell everyone about what the trip was about and what Israel was about. And hopefully, we're going to dispel a lot of the misconceptions and stereotypes that exist about Israel and the Jewish people. So I think it, it aligns very nicely with the, the goals of ADL as well. Absolutely. Um, Jacob, how, how many trips have you made to Israel yourself? Oh gosh, I've been, I mean, I'm like a pro now, Mark. I've been like 12 times and every time I go, I learn something new. It never gets old for me. Uh, there, there, it's, it's just, uh, so exciting, uh, uh, for me, uh, and, uh, it's exciting for me to take people that have never been before. So, uh, you know, I'm, uh, it, it, it is my passion going to Israel and, uh, teaching people about Israel. Uh, I need to learn some more Hebrew, uh, but, uh, and, uh, you know, I used, I used to say the only thing bad about Israel was they didn't have any good Mexican food. Mark, I'm proud to report that on our last trip, and Priscilla's our, our a witness here, we found the best taqueria 
in the world. And guess where it is? It's in Jerusalem. It's called Taqueria Luis. And the, the only problem Israel had has been remedied. They do now have great Mexican food in, in, uh, in Jerusalem. And uh, so it, it, it was really neat to, to go to the Taqueria and, and uh, to be there with the owner who's from Mexico. And uh, it, it was really neat. So uh, yeah, Israel uh, and Israel advocacy is my passion. And uh, the CLJR uh, organization exists to foster close ties between uh, these, these two great people. Uh, terrific. Well, thank you so much for, for the work over the last decade. Um, I know where I'll be eating on my next trip uh, to Israel, first thing. Um, well, let's start with you, uh, Priscilla. Uh, this was your first trip to Israel, but you've been working for the Israeli consulate uh, for, I believe, about five years. Uh, what were your initial impressions uh, of the trip? Yeah, so I guess for me, you know, I had a little background on Israel. And when Jacob asked me to go, I always wonder because I get the news alerts and I'm always informed of what goes on in Israel. And I always wonder what it would be like to be there and experience thing, everything I've heard of. And also like Jacob discussed the misconceptions and the things that we often hear in different platforms like social media. Um, about Israel and just going there and experiencing for myself, now I'm bear, better equipped to uh, promote Israel advocacy because I've been there and the misconceptions being shared, I can combat those now from firsthand experience. Yeah, that, that really is helpful uh, to be able to talk you know, from the firsthand view. Um, Lupe, this is also your first trip to Israel. Uh, what stood out uh, from the mission, from your perspective? Um, first of all, I love the trip and I, I'll be the assistant Jacob and go to the next one if you'll take me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I really loved about the trip was understanding and having a deeper understanding of uh, what I've learned in my faith, right? Going to the holy places that are referred back into the Bible for me and understanding a little bit more of how the cultures really do um, intermingle to Jacob's point of view, uh, what he was sharing about Rabbi Tarlow, right? Rabbi Tarlow, while we were on this trip, shared a lot of those similarities. And they both kind of shared how the Latino community and the Jewish community did similar things and why, right? I'm, both of my parents are from Mexico, Northern Mexico. There's a high possibility, right? That there's some sort of uh, Jewish connection there in, in, in my family as well, but just understanding really why some of the people in our, in our family community do certain things are actually coming from, from the Jewish culture and just connecting all of those pieces back to what I've learned in my faith really made an impact in, in when I came back. Uh, let me ask uh, both uh, Priscilla and, and you to be as well, was there a particular uh, idea or conception that you had of Israel that was dispelled uh, based on your visit? Uh, Priscilla, if you'd like to. Yeah, so um, before I started with the consulate, I actually had little knowledge about Israel and most of the stuff that I did know, it wasn't good. But going to Israel, one of the things we went to Spad, which is one of the cities up north um, by the, we went to the Canary, the Sea of Galilee. And everybody was getting out of school. And as you've heard, you know, there's this term of calling Israel an apartheid state a lot of the time. And as we're leaving spot to go into the bus, one of the things you see is all the kids coming out of school. And there you see the Jewish kids, the Israeli Arabs, and they're all just getting together after school, walking together, going to class, you know, in a city that's considered to be a Jewish holy site, and maybe you wouldn't expect this in their actions. So for me, experiencing those things firsthand really helped me understand and know that those misconceptions aren't really what goes on in Israeli society. You see coexistence, you see this in Jerusalem and in many other places. And for me, it was very beautiful to watch that while I was there. What about you, Lupe? I don't think I had any specific um, ideas of what I was going into. I just knew I was going to learn. One of the things that was very interesting for me was just the landscape change from when we arrived to Tel Aviv and then 
going up to Jerusalem and then going back to the Jordan River, just the landscape changing of all of that and how quickly um, and just understanding kind of the spaces and some of, of, of again, what I've read in, in, in my faith, but then understanding how close everything is as we were traveling to the different spaces, our, our tour guide was showing us a map, like this is where we are, this is where Gaza Strip is, this, and just the proximity of it and what it really kind of impacted um, the, the situation there, understanding that it really is that close, I think really uh, changed and, and just kind of gave me more perspective of some of the things that we hear here in the United States. Yeah, there's, there's nothing uh, that you can substitute for, for firsthand knowledge. And Jacob, um, you know, on all these trips, what do you enjoy most? I'm, I'm glad you asked that because what, and, and this kind of goes to the misconceptions, uh, you know, look, I'm, I'm Latino. Uh, my mom is Catholic and you know, Mexican. You know, my dad has some Jewish ancestry, but we were raised Catholic. What what I always thought about Israel, though, was that Israel uh, was, you know, Ashkenazi only, and all of the Jews were going to be blonde haired, blue eyed. And when I got there, I saw that most Israelis looked like me, you know, and it, it was cool to see that because the perception. I mean, they're all of, really good looking. <laughs> yes, yes. Keep going. Yeah, okay, right. I got it. I got it. No, but, you know, the, the I think the you know, the, to Priscilla's point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the enemies of Israel will say, oh, it's an apartheid state, or it, it you know, it's not an apartheid state. It, it's a, it's a refugee state from refugees all over the world. And, and a lot of them uh, look like Latinos. And, and th there's that whole history of, of immigration. And, and um, I think, you know, seeing Jews that, that look like um, everyone and, and seeing uh, Ethiopian Jews and, and seeing uh, Jews from Arab countries, uh, that was very powerful. I, I think a lot of our um, uh, delegates that go on the trip are Im impressed with that because, again, the, the stereotype is, oh, yeah, it, it's just Europeans and, uh, it, it's, uh, it, and the reality is quite different. So I, I, I think a, a lot of our delegates are surprised by that. Uh, and let's see, Priscilla, you were on a trip in, uh, I think it was what, October, November of 2021. Um, Lupe, you visited Israel, I, was it 2019 or tw no, 2020? Um, yeah, I think both, actually both during, uh, during the COVID pandemic. Um, Lupe, what did you, uh, what kind of, of information did you either learn ab about Israel, uh, either something that you knew or, or were confirmed knowing that, um, that, that you find resembles issues that we work on here? I know that you're involved in, uh, in the super neighborhood uh, group, I think of 46 as, as the board president. Did you find any sort of takeaways that you can apply to, to what you do here? One of the things that was really important for me too, and, and having the rabbi there, and to Jacob's point, he's been doing this for so long, they were kind of our guides, even though we had a tour guide, right? But one of the things that I learned um, from rabbi was that um, one of the big education components is that everyone in Israel should learn uh, how to read, right? Just the basics of knowledge and reading and how important and that, and that is to the community there. But even here for our communities, um, I live in a community that has been underserved, under-resourced. It's a food desert um, and just the importance of education and literature, right? There's a, a very high statistic and, and I forgot it at this moment, but the statistic of how many um, people in prison are actually uh, can't read, right? So the determination is if you can't read by fourth grade at third grade level, your trajectory to the prison pipeline is very high. And that understanding that in the Jewish community and culture in Israel, reading is, is of paramount importance and just how that really resembles the need here for our community as well. And, and what about you, Priscilla? Um, so one of the takeaways that I took that was most important to me because I'm I, I migrated here from Mexico at the age of 12 was the story that I heard from 
an Ethiopian Jewish girl. Um, they took us to a center there and she sort of talked to, to us about her struggles with assimilation, having to learn a new language and belonging of two cultures and still coming to a new country and having to experience those things. And to me, it's something that I could understand what she meant and the challenges that she faced. And it's also a reminder, like Jacob said, that Israel is a land of immigrants. So from this, you create this society that has a lot of opinions and they see things differently. And to me, that was a beautiful takeaway, understanding that I had a connection to somebody that lives thousands of miles away and that my story is similar to her story. Uh, that's, that really is a, a, a great takeaway. Uh, what, um, did you have conversations, uh, Priscilla, before you went to Israel with, with people, and what were they thinking when you told them? Yes, I'm. I mean, not at your work necessarily, but but uh, you know, either you know, friends or family. What did they say when you told them that you're you're going to spend uh, was it I think ten days uh, in Israel? Um, yeah, so usually at work, you know, everybody obviously practices Israel advocacy, but outside of work and also in my circles of friends and family, one of the common things I always receive Israel is an unsafe place to be. Um, and I also hear a lot of negative things of how could you support a state. Um, I've also heard comparisons between the two walls. Um, and just hearing all of this negative commentary use. Often I have to face the challenges at work, but when it overlaps with your personal life, it makes it a lot more different. And I like to share with people sort of now that I've came back and I've seen it and experienced it and understand it better, that sometimes you have to see it for yourself to truly understand and assess the situation. Um, so I, I did take a lot of good takeaways and I felt comfortable now defending Israel even better than I was doing before. And, and Lupe, did, when you told, you know, friends and colleagues, yeah, I'm going to Israel, um, you know, the, obviously pandemic, middle of the pandemic in the uh, summer of 2020, uh, what did they, what did they say? They're like, go have fun or was it, was it something else? I think there's a combination of, oh, that's super exciting, but do, are you sure you want to go right now? Is it safe? It was actually last summer, too, when there was a height of, you know, the, the, the conflict. Um, but one of the things that I quickly learned after meeting Jacob and Rabbi Tarla was that they weren't going to take us to a place that wasn't safe, right? That they were uh, ensuring that all the measures were there. And actually, I think we went during... I, I talk about this all the time now. It's like, I am not a very patient person. So we went at the height of, they well, were- right in. <laughs> but there were so many COVID restrictions that all, there were no lines to anything that we went to. <laughs> and so I talk about that part of it that, um, you know, they were, I never felt unsafe. I think there was a little bit of hesitancy actually from my husband who did go on the trip as well, but having them there and just kind of seeing this, the same things we were seeing that you walk around not worried about your safety, I think really changed the perspective as well. And to Priscilla's point, the conversation, right? But they, we did have that opportunity to also see um, that the conflict is actually very complicated. And as Americans, we, we have a different understanding or try to resolve things in such a quick way, or it's a black and white when it's very, it's not, right? The going back to how close everything is and, um, we actually went to an Argentinian kibbutz and seen what had happened to their farmlands, right, with, with the incendiary kites. And just having that different perspective really gave us, to Priscilla's point, more um, backup information when we do have those conversations. And you also had a chance to, to, to go uh, near the border with Gaza. Uh, what did y'all learn from, from visiting uh, that that part of Israel. I'll jump in. I think for me, one of the Jacob. I don't remember the town that we visited. Um, the closest point that we could go to. Uh, what is it? Um, Escaro, uh, I think. Uh, uh, I'm 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 looking for some Jewish uh, uh, 
help here. Escalo, was it escaro, uh, escarot or, or uh, sterot? Uh, yeah. Yes. And so for us, I think we got to a point where we could see how close it was from like a higher pointage uh, vantage view. But we also got to see kind of the, the bunkers, right, at the different stations and closer to the school, how they're camouflaged so children know where to go. And, and we actually stopped at a, at a neighborhood park and got off the bus and were able to be in the space. And, and as a mom, right, understanding um, what does that look like for the children and the moms there? And there was this caterpillar, right, cement caterpillar as a bunker. And, you know, children can play in it, but then it's also... Uh, really used and intended as 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 a bunker, right? And 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 for me, that was very essential to understanding um, how hard that really is, and understanding that you always have to be alert. And again, back to this notion that as Americans, we don't. I don't ever feel like I have to be on my toes and ready for a siren or ready ready for for any sort of danger in that sense. And and having again that first hand experience in those spaces, I think was very important to understanding more of that conflict as well. So did you have that same experience? Yeah, I'll actually echo Lupe on this. Um, I think the moment that I stood the most still and um, I did a lot of thinking is I, I have always known about the 15 second alert um, that the people on the envelope of the Gaza Strip, so within of the proximity where the missile range can breach within 15 seconds, have to hide. So I've known this, you know, for five years now, but being there and seeing a bomb shelter in a children's playground really puts things into perspective. And you hear about for instance, what a balloon represents to a child in the US is a sign of happiness, but to a balloon in those same towns, it means something like danger because it could have an explosive, it could have, uh, it could have fire that it produces. So just the reality that they're living in uh, really sunk in. And it, 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 like Lupe said, it's a, a great issue. It's not black and white. And we need to understand that those are some concerns that go on in Israel. And this is the life that people are living in right now. You know, um, Mark, you know, I've been criticized sometimes on social media. They'll say, well, you're running propaganda trips. We're not. Uh, if you want to go to to Israel, the Israelis criticize Israel better than anyone else. It's not a perfect country, but uh, they don't they don't profess to be. But it is uh, a, a country that safeguards uh, all religious uh, practices. And as 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 Christians, that's very important. But also as Muslims, I mean, it, it uh, it's such a volatile, potentially volatile uh, area that without Israel. You wouldn't have the free ability to practice uh, religions, and that's very important. And I think it often gets neglected. But uh, we also speak to uh, Arabs, we, we speak to uh, Muslims, we speak to to different people. We're not just you know going to you know, look at the good parts, or we we really try to engage in uh, a thorough. Um, trip of, you know, within 10 days, I mean, there's always more we could add, but uh, our goal is to give the delegates an opportunity to see how really complex it is. And, and Lupe, to your point, the size of Israel is, is really small when, and I think when you appreciate that, you realize how the situation is, is, uh, is potentially uh, very uh, dangerous for, for uh, the Israelis there. That's a, that's a great point, Jacob. And, and how do y'all convey that that sense uh, that that Israel is not uh, what is often portrayed? Uh, that it, it it is diverse. It is uh, not perfect, but yet um, it is a, a country which certainly st strives for perfection. And and just like you know we do here. Uh, can you can y'all can maybe share any sort of conversations that that you've had with people on y'all's return, um, where you've you've tried to convey the sense of what Israel is and isn't? Um, Lupe, do you want to try that one first? Sure. 
I think back to Jacob's point about diversity, right? And that there are other religions that are also in Israel, I think was one of those things that really surprised me, not thinking that, you know, Judaism was the only religion, but, you know, when you think of Israel, it's, it's kind of, that's probably the biggest thing you think about. But I think one of the key points for me is understanding, you know, we spent a lot of time in Jerusalem doing our trip, but understanding that, that there's four different quarters and that, you know, each one of them is kind of designated for a different religion. And I think in space, and I think that also reinforced that it's safe, right? That it's safe for others. And, and I think part of the conversations afterwards is sharing that, sharing that um, it's not a monolithic uh, people and that, that it's pretty free. Like it, it's not an oppressive space. I think those are key points to really share with others as we come back and, and again, back to the point that it's it's not a black and white issue um, that Israel is part of. So anything to add? Uh, no, just in terms of key takeaways, I think it's important to remember Israel's diversity and like Jacob echoed, a lot of people were like, well, maybe they brought you here to see what they wanted you to see. Maybe you're already biased because you work for this place. But you get the freedom to experience, wander off, talk to whomever you want to talk to, see and experience things. And reality tells you one thing, while you know other people that aren't in favor of Israel tell you another thing. And then you're able to make those own conclusions for yourself. Uh, so for me, that was very important to um, bring that back with me. And because of those things, I've had conversations that are sometimes hard uh, with close friends of mine who still don't support, you know, uh, my support for Israel, but at least I come from a place of knowledge and understanding, and I can combat those messages. And I like to add one thing too. I think part of our trip, some of the delegates in our, in our group, right, questioned a little bit more. And I think it created a free space while we were there to ask those questions and say, wait, are you actually just bringing us people who are pro-Israel, right? And Jacob, you're smiling because you know who I'm talking about. But I, yeah. I love that about it, that the delegate group is not one. one what names, by the way? I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, exactly. Lupe, exactly. Because, I mean, we, we pick people that, uh, like Israel, that don't like Israel. I mean, first off, the delegates are courageous to even accept the trip because now if you if you uh, announce that you're going to Israel on social media, you're going to get attacked and, and, and they're going to criticize you for, for going. But again, uh, we want people who have never been. I think another problem, Mark and Lupe and Priscilla, that happens is I think in in the Trump era, a lot of people decided they wanted to be anti-Israel because they perceived Trump as being pro-Israel. And, you know, Israel, support for Israel has always been bipartisan. And we stress that it's not one candidate doesn't have a monopoly on Israel. And I think it, it's been hard uh, in the aftermath of the Trump era because some people think, well, you know, I don't like Trump and I'm going to not like Israel. And we have to combat that. But uh, yeah, absolutely. These uh, we, we want people uh, that are willing to go, people that are leaders. There's no uh, litmus test on who gets invited at all. I was going to ask that, Jacob, in terms of how you go about, uh, you know, formulating your invitation list for the, you know, for these missions. You, you know, you've done it, you said, for, for over a decade now. Well, um, we... Yeah. Obviously, these are our two best uh, delegates, uh, Priscilla and Lupe. Uh, but uh, no, look, we're looking for leaders in business, political leaders, um, community leaders, people that can uh, influence other people. That's the only, I guess, requirement that we have. And uh, we've had people from all over the U.S., uh, Las Vegas, uh, Illinois. Uh, most of them tend to be from Houston and Texas, but uh, we have taken people from, from all over the country. And we've had um, allies uh, of the Latino community attend. We, we had, uh, 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 we've had African-American leaders attend. We've had uh, Anglo uh, uh, leaders attend. So it, it, it really makes for a, a, a really robust discussion to talk about our perceptions and then to see them, see the reality. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's very powerful. You know, in the time that you've been doing these missions, have, how, how have the missions themselves changed since when you 
you know, started it, you know, roughly 10 years ago to now, is the itinerary the same? Or, you know, how do you make those adjustments? How do you decide, you know, what makes sense for people to visit? What's impactful? What's not impactful? Well, I smiled because, you know, we, we've had trouble sometimes with guides. Uh, about three, uh, four years ago, uh, Rabbi Tarlow and I had to fire a guide uh, who was, you know, you know I, I, I think the only word in Hebrew I know is hospada, you know, advocacy, but he was trying to turn it into, he was an Israeli guy and he was, he, he thought he was helping and he was not helping because he had a, an agenda and he was criticizing uh, 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 people uh, and it was, it was not what we wanted. And uh, we had to fire him after the second day uh, because it, it, we, Israel doesn't need the propaganda. Israel will sell itself. I mean, we can stand all of the scrutiny, warts and all, and we still come out great. So uh, we had to make a change. Uh, now we have a, a, a you know a great guide or who who does a great job. Uh, but uh, the guides are who the guide is is very important. Uh, and uh, it it the agenda typically is always it, Jerusalem and uh, you know so, sometimes we go up north to the Golan Heights and and uh, other times we can't fit it in. Uh, but um, we try to do as much as possible within the 10 day period. Um, uh, and I, Mark, I will say that uh, during our la after our last trip, uh, people were really moved. People have mo been moved after all the trips. I, at our last trip, uh, one of the delegates was Cindy Clifford, uh, uh, my friend here in Houston, who's not Latina. And she came back and she held a uh, a lunch a dinner for about 20 people you know to tell about the trip and i mean this trip really impacts people's lives and it changes the way they view israel and uh it again but you you can't do it on zoom you have to go down there you have to to see it for yourself uh the beauty that is it that, that is israel yeah that's an extraordinary uh, way to put it jacob and you know, providing people with this opportunity to have this this you know potentially life changing experience uh, on in, in a place that is on the front page more often than not is is just so uh, is so wonderful. Well, let's talk about favorite parts. Uh, you know, was it a a destination, or was it a certain activity, or was it a certain meeting, um, Priscilla? What was your, you know, if if somebody puts you on the spot and says, what was your favorite part of the mission? What's your response? Okay, I'll pick top three because it's hard to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> so first one would be Jerusalem. Um, I think the euphoria that you feel there of a sense of seeing the coexistence, seeing all the religions together, visiting the holy sites and all the things. It's something that you don't experience anywhere in the world. Uh, the Golan Heights, I actually rode with Rabbi Tarlow um, and I made him a joke because we had ATVs. And I said, Rabbi Tarlow, you better start praying because I'm the driver today. And it was a beautiful sight to see just the Golan Heights and then also learn about some of the history of the Golan Heights. And my favorite city surprisingly was not Tel Aviv, it was Jaffa, because I really appreciated how ancient and the contrast with the water and the sea, and you look off to the side and then you see a new city that's Tel Aviv right on the horizon. And that to me uh, was very beautiful to see yesterday meeting today and seeing the two contrasts of what history shows today. So uh, those were my top three. Perfect. Well, Lupi, in, in fairness, I, I'll have to give you three as well, so. I'll do two, and then if I can think of the third one. First of all, it's the food, because the food is delicious and amazing. <laughs> so I'll go with the food. Uh, but in terms of places, I really loved going to the City of David and having that VIP tour. Um, it connected a lot of, again, of what I've read since I was a child, and now knowing the discoveries that are happening there, and, and that it truly has evidence, it's evidence-based, right? So it's not just a story, but it really becomes historic um, in terms of, of the tangible. And for me, that's really important because again, it creates that um, knowledge and content of how do you combat some of those stories. It's what now there's actual proof, right? With scientific 
um, backing. Um, and it's not just storytelling. And so for me, that was really important. Like I said, we spent a lot of time in Jer Jerusalem and just, it was, it was beautiful just walking the streets there as well. Uh, and I'll let whoever would like to, to chime in on this, Jacob, and you as well, please. You know, Israel has developed, you know, its high tech uh, industry, uh, you know, as, as much as I think any, any country in the, in, in the world, particularly, you know, when it comes to a lot of um, environmental kinds of technologies, whether it is, you know, water or, or you know, air. Uh, is there anything that, uh, that y'all were able to uh, either see or learn that you're like, you know what, we need to bring that back here? I'll take that one, Mark, or, or take a stab at it. Uh, we've been, we've seen some of the technology that Israelis are doing with regard to water development and how they're sharing that uh, in Africa and Latin America. And uh, I think that it's really powerful to see that, you know, high tech can have a, a real benefit to people that don't have access to, to water and, and to uh, other technologies that the Israelis are developing. And it's exciting to see that the Israelis are, are, are sharing that technology all over the world. Uh, and you know, it, it shows that there can be you know, benefits you know, to you know, uh, th those types of technology uh, uh, programs that it, it's not just benefiting uh, you know, the owners of the company. Uh, they're really, uh, the, the Israeli entrepreneurs are sharing that with, with the developing world. And that's really powerful uh, as well. I got to chime in on my favorite part and that's the Shook. Uh, the Shook, uh, the market in, uh, in Jerusalem is I think my favorite experience to see people getting ready for Shabbat, uh, that whole experience that, uh, you know, Christians, we, you know, we have Sunday, but it, we don't have the, the prep that uh, Jews have, you know, prepping for, for the Sabbath. And seeing that the, the city prepare for the Sabbath and seeing it shut down is really dramatic. And then seeing it reopen on Sunday, um, that is really powerful. Uh, uh, my favorite. I remember the smells. Uh, the, the, the smells you know, and, you know, back to the stereotypes, to be able to see Jewish uh, fishmongers and, and Jewish shopkeepers. You know, it's, you know, Israel is not just a land of, of doctors and lawyers and, and high tech people. There, there's bus drivers that are Jewish and, and butchers and, uh, uh, you know, it, it's a real country with, with all different types of people. And uh, I think seeing that in the Shook is, is very powerful to me. And that's my favorite part. I, I, I think I could spend a whole day there. Uh, we never yeah. have a, a whole day to spend there because yeah. there's so much else to see, but that's my favorite part. Uh, well, I, I'm, thank you for adding that. I'm sorry, I did not mean to, uh, to leave you out of that, uh, of that opportunity. Um, you know, there's... Uh, Israel is a relatively small country. It's, uh, you know, the population now is somewhere north of, of 8 million. Um, I can't remember exactly, but a decent part of it probably would fit into the square miles of Harris County. Even. Um, and, and sometimes it takes longer to go from one end of Harris County to the other than it takes to, you know, cross Israel, even, even in a lot of traffic. Uh, do you know you talked about this trip as being so uh, you know as you know life changing? That's a big term. Uh, but is there can can, I, can you all describe maybe something that either you felt uh, that you now feel differently, or maybe something you do you did and now you you may do that differently? I mean, what was the biggest impact? I guess is is really what I'm trying to get at. And and Lupi, if you want to start off, yeah, I think for me the biggest um, impact, takeaway, change of mind, all of that, I think it's really giving us language back to that whole conversation of how do we talk about the conflict there, right? And and I actually try to compare it a little bit to what we have here in the United States. It would be like being in Mexico and tossing something over the border and expecting someone not to do something, right? And that it's not as black and white. I think it's really what it's given me that just 
confidence to talk about it more and to openly say something where before I would have just kind of gone into the background and not wanted to be part of stirring anything up where now I can actually have the confidence to say, no, this is my opinion and I've been there, right? Versus it's something that we can contextualize from far away. And for me, I think that was the biggest impact that now I feel confident enough to have those conversations or at, at least um, well-versed enough to be part of them. I, I, I saw a Facebook video of two different conversations, right? And now I understand it a little bit better versus just, oh, it's another article or it's another piece of news. Now I actually have been in the spaces and feel more um, connected to it. And what about you, Priscilla? In terms of impact for me, it's now I have a much stronger appreciation for my Israeli colleagues um, because a lot of the time when they would share their stories and their personal views that they have on Israel, I couldn't connect the two. And now just seeing what their life is like, because like I said, in Israel, you experience very highs. And then sometimes there's moments where you, I wouldn't say lows, but cause you to reflect like the Holocaust Museum, going to Jerusalem, going to the Gaza Strip. And it has just brought a bigger appreciation for their culture um, and understanding them as people and understanding why they are the way that they are. Um, so that was very impactful for me to now have that connection with them and know, I know what you're talking about. I know what you mean and I'm here with you. Jacob is, you know, what, what is, what's been really the, the biggest impact of, of you doing this work? Well, you know, when I first went uh, to Israel in 20, uh, tw uh, 2011, uh, it was, um, I, I was struck by the similarities between the Latino community and the Jewish community. I mean, you know, growing up Catholic, we're always doing our, our signs of the cross, Mark, and we do it, you know, anytime there's a siren. And then when I went to Israel and I saw people touch the mezuzah and, and you know, I, I just noticed that these traditions that are are common in both communities. And then I also came to realize the other similarity is that they're both mother cultures. I mean, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the Jewish culture is a mother culture and so is the Latino culture. And seeing that that similarity, the immigrant experience that, that uh, both communities uh, share, uh, the fact that the Latino community gets attacked from the left and the right, and certainly that's the case, from the with the Jewish community that you know you have enemies on on both extremes and it's hard to know who your friends are my goal with this organization and, and Rabbi Tarlo's goal is you know to create uh, an alliance with the 50 million Latinos in the U.S. Uh, with the Jewish community because we do have big numbers uh, we have to a lot to learn from the Jewish community also in, in terms of, of political power, education, uh, financial, but with our numbers, hopefully we can create a, a partnership to where both communities benefit uh, from this alliance. So that's our mission. Uh, I'm also very excited about the Anusim, the, the uh, people that were forced to convert uh, 500 years ago. Uh, uh, Lupe mentioned it. You know, they are, the estimates say that the descendants of the Anusim uh, could be as high as 20 million people. And, uh, you know, I think Jews and, and Israelis are starting to realize that on the, the you know, the crypto Jews, uh, that's a real thing. And, you know, we're not, our, our group is not religious, but we want to celebrate the, those, uh, those traditions that exist because a lot of, uh, of Latinos uh, in, you know, that come from northern Mexico have those uh, traditions with them, and you know they have traditions that they've been doing for so many years, and no one knows why. I mean, there's a a, a funeral, and they cover the 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 mirrors. Um, you know, so many traditions that don't explain that don't make sense unless you you consider that they were Jewish. Uh, you know, albeit 500 years ago. So that's really what's most exciting to me. Um, uh, this is my passion. Uh, I, I love uh, showing Israel to people, and I'm just uh, I'm so excited that I get to go uh, twice uh, next year or this year. Also, I would like to ask everyone uh, 
please, if there's recommendations for people that should come on this trip, please uh, reach out to me, send me uh, recommendations. Mark, uh, you've also offered to help us with ADL in Jerusalem because we could always use more speakers. We could always use uh, different speakers. Uh, we're, uh, and I, I'm gonna take you up on that. Uh, we have a proposed agenda oh. for our, uh, uh, our trip in August. And we hope to connect with the, the ADL representative in Jerusalem because you know, we're always trying to find you know, new speakers to give the delegates uh, a, a full view of what uh, Israel's all about. Yeah, and if I need to fly over there in order to, to help out. <laughs> all right. Yeah. We, you got to try out Dakaria Luis, uh, right? We got to exactly. try Exactly. Well, actually, I thought you were going to say, if anybody has a recommendation for any other Dakarias in uh, Israel, please you know, put that in the chat. Um, well, this is, I, I'm always excited to hear from, from people who uh, talk about their first trip to Israel. It's always different than, you know, there's a, there's a lot of great places in the world to visit. And going to a place the first time is always going to challenge your, you know, your initial conceptions and, and your ideas. And that's why you know, travel is, is so important to uh, helping people understand um, others. But there's something different about when people go to Israel for the first time. Uh, and obviously, the, the history and the religious significance play a role. But I think part of it is just some of the things we've been talking about, which is everybody has an idea of what either Israel is or isn't regardless of whether they've been there, because it is so often in the news and it's, it's so often you know, controversial. And so by, by taking the time and Jacob, by organizing these, these amazing opportunities, uh, you know, you're able to, to provide people these, these chances to, to challenge their ideas uh, and then to bring it home. And, and perhaps, you know, may not everybody, you may not be able to open everybody's mind or change everybody's mind, but hopefully some of these conversations that y'all are having can have that impact, or it's the start of a discussion. Uh, can you, you know, I don't know if y'all have any particular examples of, of some of the conversations, I know we've talked a little bit about it, um, about where you think that you might have been able to um, to move somebody, maybe not becoming, you know, pro pro Israel, but at least opening their mind to to changing how they they view uh, the country. That was a very long question. Well, Mark, I have lots of examples of folks who who shared that with me, and uh, who you know, I, I'm not going to mention them necessarily right now. But they told me, Jacob, I was worried about coming here. I thought it was a propaganda trip. And I understand uh, it, it's more complicated, or I understand the position of the Israelis, and it, it's neat to see that. I had one uh, a lady, a great lady, who's an elected official. She told me on the on the trip over, she's like, "Jacob, I'm not I'm not going to go along with this propaganda trip if that's what it is. I'm going to ask hard questions." And um, her favorite speaker was the the Palestinian uh, journalist. Uh, um, uh, who, who, who was great. And he was, he, you know, he was not an apologist for Israel, uh, but he, he kind of explained how difficult things are in Gaza and in the West Bank and how, uh, as an Israeli Arab, he has more rights and, uh, than he would uh, in Gaza or in the West Bank. And, but he's by no means, uh, you know, an apologist for, for Israel. But it was neat to, to talk to her afterwards because she was said, she, she said, yeah, I understand. It's a lot more complicated than you hear on uh, CNN or, or Fox or any of the media outlets. So, Lupe, any, anything to add? Jacob, no, I, oh, please go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, no, I think Jacob hit it on, on the head with that one. Uh, we've got time for one more question. Jacob, I'm going to put you on the spot. What, what question do you have for two of your, your former mission attendees? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was reading a, a, a question. Uh, so I said, what question do you have that you would like to ask uh, Priscilla uh, and Lupe? All right. I'll, I'll um, 
what could we do better uh, besides more time for shopping? You, I know you've already told me that, uh, and Rabbi Tarlo, that, that yes, we need more time for shopping, but is there anything you all think we could do to make it better? And um, what can we do to get more uh, pr progressives or, or, or uh, you know, you know, to, to be able to feel comfortable coming to Israel? Uh, so it's a two part question. Um, so I can I can start on that. So I wouldn't say the only thing I was very upset about was that we didn't get to go uh, to the Dead Sea. So add that on the agenda next time, please, because we did not get to experience it. And I feel like it was done on purpose. Um, but other than that, I think the important thing to bring um, new leaders and talk about the mission that you guys are doing. And um, one of the things that I love about it is that it does empower Latinos and shows them a different perspective by bringing them into this trip and allowing us to make our own opinions about Israel. It would just be, you know, giving us an opportunity to also share our experiences and let and help them understand that, as we've said here, when you're there, you're allowed to ask whatever questions you you want. You're allowed to make those opinions for yourself. And I think you guys do a great job of, in putting this trip together. So I think, you know, um, giving us an opportunity to get the message out there to other community leaders and making sure that we're letting them know about the work that you guys are doing. I can echo a lot of what Priscilla said, but I also know that we went um, during the very COVID restricted time. Um, but even then I felt like we learned a lot and, and I believe our time was a little bit more structured than it normally is, Jacob, if, if that's true. Um, but I think I, I wanna go to the Sea of Galilee. So that would be the only edit to my, <laughs> to my trip, right? You can't keep, you can't make us all happy. So that's one thing. <laughs> um, but I think in terms of just engaging with more people, it really is how do you utilize now all of us, right? And one of the things that uh, as soon as I came back, I told Jacob, I'm, I'm, I'm in to help in whichever way, right? And so my forte is more communications and marketing and messaging and whatnot. And so in any way that I can now support um, the organization and others to really kind of structure what that message could be so that it can be shared even more, right? Whether it's the one-on-one, -on -one, but it might be bits of, bits of information that we could really start to share and start to um, kind of really mold what that bigger message could be by uh, smaller bites of information. Well, Mark, that really leads me to thank you because we've had so many delegates who have said, hey, uh, you know, I'm not really good. I'm not good at writing an op-ed piece, but this event, allowing our delegates, some of them to share the experience is very important. So thank ADL for, for hosting this because I think there's a lot of people that want to tell their story. You know, what we ask, some people are able to give us money and certainly we, we like that, but other people give us, uh, 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 you know, uh, they attend an event uh, with Rabbi Tarla or they, 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 they attend an event like this and we need more events like this. So thank you ADL for hosting us, for letting us talk about our organization and, and our experience, because I think there's a lot of pent up demand now, uh, maybe because of COVID, there haven't been many events to do things. And Mark, when I first uh, connected with you, I, I think the two communities have to do more together. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very active in, in a number of Jewish organizations as well, uh, APAC and, and, uh, um, AJC, uh, but what, and all of those groups have Latino uh, themed uh, or uh, sub parts, but I think we need to, to get the two communities together more. So I really applaud you for doing this uh, because, you know, th that's how we're going to combat hate. That's how we're going to fulfill the mission of, of this organization by, uh, you know, breaking down barriers, having conversations, learning that uh, just because there's differences doesn't mean that uh, we can't be friends. Well, Jacob, you took away my, my big ending. Um, that, was, that was pretty much my message. Uh, and I, you, you were so eloquent, so I appreciate that. And it is our pleasure to, to, to have you all and, and we'll look forward to doing, doing more. Uh, well, y'all are great ambassadors when I say, and, and ambassadors, not, not just for Israel, but for, helping people 
better understand Israel. And those are really two separate things. Um, getting to, to Jacob's point, uh, you know, here at ADL, we want to promote understanding uh, because that is the key. Uh, once you have some insight, some understanding of how other people are or what they face, um, you are so far along the trajectory of, of resolution, being able to resolve issues without you know, the kinds of, of unfortunate conflicts that we see. So I, I thank you all for, uh, for going on this trip, uh, for taking it all in and for sharing it. And, and uh, Jacob um, and the Center for Latino Studies, y'all do terrific work. We are happy to, to work with y'all and uh, figure out more things that we can do going forward. Thank you all for joining us. I hope you enjoyed uh, this presentation. And uh, as always, if you ever have any questions, um, or comments after, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. So uh, thank you all so much and uh, have a great night. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes our program for this evening. Have a great night.